Hi, welcome. I'm Brooks Anderson and I've been painting landscapes, seascapes, and abstract paintings all my life. And I want you to be excited about your work, excited about painting again, and to inspire others as they see your paintings. All right, so let's get started. And I think it's important to start with what's on my palette, what's on my table. Um, I think laying out your colors in a very uh, predictable, harmonious fashion on your, on your palette. And incidentally, I use a glass palette. I can put this in the freezer at night and it keeps colors frozen. My oil colors stay fresh and I can also just wipe them off simply with a little razor blade. Makes it nice and easy. Initially, when I start a painting, I use this product called Liquin. It's a very fast drying resin based medium and you can use it as just mixing paints. Get really good quality brushes that are easy to clean. It's important to clean them each night because that's, this is your tool right here between you and the canvas. I'm here today to tell you that most people typically paint right on top of the white gesso and go for the detail, go for their finished painting right off the get-go and I'm here to say that's not probably not a good idea because this is not really a color it is a gesso and if you were to paint on top of a of a gray gesso on top of that which I'll be showing you how to do that's far better and we'll be adding colors later on top of that gray gesso there's your medium gray gesso just like that black red and yellow and that's your mixture right there so as I'm painting this I'm putting enough paint on the brush to really, really cover all of the areas of this white canvas. Painting on a white canvas is something I'm trying to steer you away from. And starting with a medium gray certainly is a, is a great start. Um, and working with, you know, in between values and, and getting a beefier gesso layer. But really applying the color is probably the most important thing. So when it comes to perhaps a painting of mine, for instance, what's beneath this? Yes, there is a white canvas way, way down at the source of it all and a gray layer, but there are layers of built up colors in order to get to this state. And I'm going to show you a process that I don't know of anybody else who's doing it, but it's a process of applying multiple layers of colors onto the canvas of the gray. And I will just show you initially what that looks like. Here's an initial layer of one layer of colors. And I'm covering over every bit of that gray. The gray has done its job. But now we want to apply intense, lush color on top of this canvas. And most importantly, I'm not thinking about my final painting, what it's going to be, a bowl of fruit, a seascape, an abstract. I'm just simply putting down shapes of color. If I can teach you to use as many colors in your palette as possible, I've done my job. Can you imagine a, a chef in a kitchen, a master chef using salt and pepper, maybe some oregano and that's it? I think the beauty is in the sauce. This is your sauce. It's, it's great to use as many colors, as many spices and herbs as possible. So here you have a completed, everything, all the gray covered over, completed first layer on top of your gray, first layer of my underpainting. So there are already with this dry piece, which will become in a minute, a cloudscape. There's a layer of gray, a first layer, a second layer, and now a third layer where I'm really honing in further on shapes and, and giving myself enough visceral visual energy on which to work. Now, because that cloud piece is by itself, it is what it is, this is going to be 
not a copy of that cloud piece, but it's going to be an adaptation. But the real, real say so is what's going on with my underpainting and how it affects what I see there, combining what's with there, and combining it with the underpainting here. I still would like to keep a lot of the colors that are beneath and not just go bananas with the opaque stuff. But I want to use that purple. I want, and that's a really nice color. And I want to use that in my, when I get down to the horizon line, I like to use that color. So I'm going to kind of just do a nice little glaze. This is a more traditional approach of working perhaps with a toned canvas. And how I will start this is by simply using oil pastels just to mark in the general shapes and composition. I'm working quickly, as you can see, not depending on detail of how things will look later. I'm not worrying about rocks and water right now. I'm working on just the basic big shapes of the most dynamic composition. Okay, this is a part that is very important to me, the dynamic composition section. And before I talk about my painting next to me, I'd like to talk about briefly about this book by Edgar Payne, who was one of the original plein air painters of the California early period. And it's a book he wrote called Composition of Outdoor Painting. As you see the triangle here, everything's kind of leading and pointing up to the upper left hand, upper middle part of the painting and leaving the lower painting as more of that release area. The tension area would be in the upper area. So you see what you just saw from the sketch, this wonderful triangle. Here it's been kind of cut off to this beautiful vertical right here, leading you back in the diagonals, everything kind of leading you back into the classic vanishing point perspective. And last, you know, people have often asked me, how do you know when a painting is done? Well, there are a lot of ways you can tell, but what I would say is when there's a whole symphony to it, there's a certain hum. When you stand back and look at it, there is a riveting feel to it. All the components fit together. So once again, thank you for visiting. Thanks for looking at this video. You can always go back to anything you want. I'm sure you got some great things to work with and a lot of inspiration. Once again, thanks for visiting.